entire paragraph in, in, in my book. The point is that as the audience member pointed out, the Koine Greek of the New Testament was not some elevated theological language. And if there was a specific attempt to create a translation that is above the level of the original, are we not saying we can improve on what the Holy Spirit himself did? That's right. Okay, this gentleman in, in the front, yep, that's it, fine. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got two main points, really. Um, if, as you say, um, Pastor White... Could you speak up a little, sorry? Yeah, if, as you say, that um, the manuscripts were copied ad infinitum, um, in the early centuries, right. um, how do you know any of it comes from a, an authentic source? Say, say the uh, uh, disciples themselves wrote any source that those were copied from. And in that case, if you if you concede that, then which version is the the truth, as it were? And does that not open the door to say that you know you, we are free to kind of choose which might be the more um, which version speaks more truthfully to the, the, the religion that you're trying to portray well, and believe in. I, I think you're misunderstanding the nature of the early manuscripts. Um, when, when you ask the question, how do we know they came from an authentic source, we don't know what the source of any manuscript is. It's, the, it's what the, the, the manuscript says. Uh, for example, when we found uh, P52, the little papyrus fragment that most people feel is the earliest fragment we have in the New Testament from John chapter 18, verses 31 to 34 and 37 to 38, um, where, where Pilate and Jesus are speaking. Uh, the, the reason they recognized that is they recognized that this is from the Gospel of John. And so that's the only way you recognize any of those. So they all go back to an original archetype. They all go back to that original. And as I said, Christians just allowed everybody to make these, these copies and distributed them around because they wanted everyone to hear the Gospel. In fact, the most widely copied book in the New Testament was John. Sort of like we pass out Gospels of John today. They were doing the same thing back... Well, they didn't do it to Roman soldiers because that would be a bad thing, but uh, they were doing the same thing back then. So they are, we can recognize them because they're all copies of the same text. So I'm not sure what you mean by an authorized source or something no, like that. No, I mean that. authentic, as in... Authentic. Do you know for a fact that... Since, since they all say the same thing. Yeah, no, do, do you know for a fact that that particular... The, copy, the earliest copies that you're citing that are more that are earlier than any of the uh, uh, manuscripts that the King James is, is based right. on. How do you know that there wasn't an earlier source than that or another source which could also have been copy copied? Um, because we don't have any evidence of it in history. Well, it is the there... only way, the, all you can do is go with what history provides you. And what history provides us is the richest manuscript tradition of any work of antiquity. But the problem is the text of the Byzantine manuscript tradition is not what you find in those first centuries. It is the Alexandrian manuscripts that have that most primitive text. Okay. Can, can I, can, Jack, can I, can I just... Well, can I just uh, the, the point that was made that after the translation of, of, of the King James Version, right. they say ma manuscripts that were earlier yes. were found, yes. um, and they would give different to... That, That's right. In other words, they weren't ignored by the King James uh, translators. They didn't have them. Why don't we now, because we've got those earlier manuscripts, say, actually, if they'd had them, they would have translated something different? All right. Uh, they, did, they did know about Vaticanus. Mm -hmm. They obviously knew about the Latin Vulgate. The Latin Vulgate was never a Textus Receptus, by the way. It was locked away in the Roman Catholic Church. It was never used uh, amongst, uh, amongst God's people in any sense. But again... Yes, we, we do have some manuscripts today. I'm glad they weren't used because they are corrupted. And, and, uh, and what's your, can, and, can and you explain why, why you believe they were corrupted okay. and, the, and the ones that the King James Version, uh, King James translators used weren't corrupted? Can, can you explain that I think briefly? A, a, I think a, a simple little thing. A, we've got 2,900 more words. Now, we've got... 5,500 manuscripts, many of them with these 2,900 additional words. How did those words, how were those words added? How did they, you, you would say, well, we've added to them. How did we do that? Expansion of how did you do it cohesively? How could it do, have been done over a wide geographic area? You've got 
two primary manuscripts with 50 supporting manuscripts with 2,900 fewer words. Now that is your Mount Impassable. These are not as cohesive. They are not as cohesive. I, I think James right. feels he's climbed Mount yeah, Impassable. I'm, I'm on the, right other, on the other side, side of Mount Impassable. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you have because not. As, no, I, you as, have I've, not. as I've pointed out, no, Erasmus knew of Vaticanus. Uh, Erasmus knew of Vaticanus. And he left it where it lay. Did he ask Bombasius to check out the Commiohanium in Vaticanus? Yes or no? I don't know. He did. I, I don't know. He did. And he used it to support his non-insertion of it in the second edition. So the I point never, is they, were aware, of, they that, were aware of it and they, they recognized that they did not know about text types that time. There was no rejection of these other manuscripts. They have been discovered since then. And I believe any fair reading of the preface to the readers would show that if those translators had the manuscript evidence we have today, they would utilize all of them for the oh. production of their text. Okay, let, let's, let's take one more question. Just, I'm going to take a few emails, and then I'm going to give you all about a, both a couple of minutes to sum up, okay. because our time will have gone. Yeah. Just a quick sort of statement. Someone mentioned on an email about not understanding the so-called hard words in the King James Bible. Well, people today still read Shakespeare, and the Bible says, from a Christian perspective, study to show thyself approved unto God. And the Bible speaks about the Spirit, which we're not talking about, the Holy Spirit of God, teaching people to discern His Holy Word, not men's critical words. It's the Holy Spirit of God that can teach us. And now, with that, as a, as a sort of a statement, um, people say King James only. I am a King James only, but it's the definition of terms. I'm not like Peter Ruttman, who says the King James only supersedes and is, is greater than the original autographs, the Greek and Hebrew. Okay. I am a King James only in the sense that I read, teach, preach. My children read the same Bible and memorize the same verses, if you please. That is a King James only in my term. So we have to define the terms. But a question for you, uh, James, really. Sorry, sorry I'm going to have to cut. We'll okay. never get time. Sorry. You go ahead. We're all going to come back in a year's time and do it all over again, I think, <laughs> at this rate. Uh, uh, can we go back for a few more emails, uh, Kat, please? Uh, and then we, we, we will I'll give you both uh, a, a few minutes to sum up. And then if we still got time, I'll take a few more uh, questions, uh, a few more comments from the audience. Yeah. Okay. There's one here that says, Jack uh, Mormon says, the King James Version is a standard. Well, where do you go when the King James Version differs in three different places? In Jeremiah 34, 16, Chronicles 33, 19, and Nahum 3, 16. The Oxford King James differs from the Cambridge King James. If the King James is supposed to be the standard, which of the two should be our standard? If you say we go back to the Greek... You expose the error of the King James onlyism and prove that the King James is not to be used exclusively. Excuse that, and you're summing up. Okay, yep, yeah, fine. We'll just get a couple more okay, quick there's ones. There's another uh, one here. It says Dr. S. Franklin Lodgson, who was the contributor uh, of the NASB, has denounced his participation and no longer stands by it. He is an authorized version believer now. And that's from Joseph. Okay. okay. Bless him. There's one for James White. It says You stated that the pilgrims hated the King James Bible. However, James Alden owned the King James Bible, and it is now on display to this day at Pilgrim's House. Are you not exaggerating? Do, do you have any proof that all the pilgrims hated the King James? Does the existence of John Alden's King James Bible not prove that you have distorted the facts on this point? Okay, uh, two, two there minutes to sum up. There might have been a pilgrim two, two, who liked it. But the pilgrims two minutes as, to sum up, whole, and then Jack, two minutes to sum up. Very, very quickly, just an answer to that. The pilgrims as a whole used the Geneva Bible. They loved the Geneva Bible, and they distrusted uh, King James because it was a government Bible. It was. It was, it was sponsored by the government. And in fact, he, he actually told the translators certain words they could not use. They could not translate ecclesia as, as anything other than church. They could not translate it as assembly because the king had given them guidelines as to they could not translate baptize uh, as immerse. They had to transliterate it. So there were guidelines that the king provided along those lines that are important. I hope everyone understands what the real issue here is this evening. The real issue is what did the inspired apostles originally write? And I think we've seen by looking at Revelation 16.5, there are a number of other places where the TR has a unique reading that no manuscript in the world reads. What that means is if you, if you take the position that Pastor Mormon has taken is that Christians for 1,600 years 
could not claim to have had the full word of God. How can that be? That's just simply not a, a viable alternative. The reality is if you listen to what the translators themselves say and you look at the facts without that bias, without using words like added, deleted, so on and so forth, and just simply ask the questions directly, you will see that God has given to us a tremendous wealth of information. We can believe the New Testament has been preserved. It was not preserved in one particular text that had to come into existence in 1611. It has been preserved throughout the history of God's people, whether they were, whether they were speaking Latin or Greek or any other language, God has always provided for his people. I think it's vitally important that we not approach this with traditions in the way, but that we simply examine the information and allow it to speak for itself. Thank you very much, Jack. Jack, your final two minutes. Yes, again. Uh, certainly, it does seem that Christ has promised to preserve his word, and not just his word singular, but his words plural. If the words were given verbally, they've been preserved verbally, they could be, have been found by any generation. And if it seems strange that for 1,800 years we've not had the true Word of God, and then it was restored, then from of all places, a manuscript that was hardly ever used, it's in better shape than this Bible of mine, uh, Codex Vaticanus, or Codex Sinaiticus. So now we've got this two-fold pillar, and we've got 50 other manuscripts that give partial support to it. They are not cohesive. Your peers at Munster will tell you that they're not cohesive. We've got the vast majority of manuscripts that support this uh, 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 Bible, the authorized version. And then I, I acknowledge, I have to address Revelation 16.5, but not, it's going to have to be another I've got time, 105 <laughs> hybrid <laughs> passages that result Thank from, you. and this is from Maurice Robinson, Thank that appear in no other okay. manuscript Listen, that are in this one. I, I'm going to have to cut in there. We're going to run out of time. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you so much, James. Thank you all very much. Thank you for watching. See you again very soon. Sorry we couldn't deal with it all. See you again. Bye for now. <laughs>